This is the Gonzo G724M, and right out of the box, I'm very fond of this. Now, you're probably going to notice two modifications to the stock knife that I put in kind of right away. Um, one is that the laser engraving um, for the information and the product name are very eh, eh, shiny. And that's because I rubbed some aluminum into it. The etching is very aggressive. Oh, look at that. The etching was very aggressive and out of the box it was starting to turn brown and so I figured I would head that off of the pass at the pass and uh, I uh, gave it this treatment to suck the oxygen out of the etching and turn it back into and cover it with something that was that would be protective to that. Uh, the other thing is that the pocket clip is mounted on the left facing side so that when you have it normally like this um, it's uh, over here instead and right away this introduces kind of a, a problem with this knife that is um, it's made so that you can flip it ambidextrous but this bend right here is not really lefty friendly. It's uh, it's tilted slightly so you're not in full contact over here like you are on this side. This would be a very easy thing to fix if you had a vise or a very easy thing to fix if you were running the factory. Uh, one more thing is it's not made so that out of the box you can just flip it open and closed gravity style. The spring is very tight on it, and uh, the main pin here, or the main screw, is also very tight. And that's you're, if you loosen it up to to let it swing freely, you're going to lose this excellent lockup, which is incredibly strong in all directions. But uh, it doesn't actually take that much doing to loosen this so that it's comfortable to swing freely. I feel like I'm gonna wreck my screwdriver here. There we go. Couldn't, I wouldn't do that before. I'm gonna loosen that a little bit further, but yeah. There we go. There, now it's all on its own, but you see I've introduce the tiniest little bit of blade play right there. Oh well. It also comes with this uh, nylon sheath, which is awful. I, I hate it. Um, I'm not really a sheath person for my knives anyway, and like your typical nylon sheath, like, this isn't as bad as it can get, but there's some hot spots here and here, just immediately. You have to get it really far in there if you want it to close properly. That's, that's not going to be terribly durable. It's just awful. Um, this was, the glass breaker here is a screw that holds the pocket clip in place, and it was relatively easy to change that out using the uh, wrench portion, which I'm going to do off screen after a cut. Yeah, changed my mind. Uh, not doing it after a cut. Um, I will cut out some of the process here, but you can see it's already going quite quickly there before you start to get that free. I wanted to show you the inside of this thing. Um, let's see, is it is enough that I can do it with my fingers yet? Yes, it is. All right. Now, I can also tell you that the spring that holds the axis lock in place is very tight out of the box. You notice that I was having trouble with it over here. Um, there is a mod by a Ray Christopher, uh, a 
uh, link either right there or in the in the comments description, whatever. Um, that I'm probably going to wind up using on this if I happen to keep it. I'm not going to make mine quite as loose as his, but uh, and something has to be done about how tight that is. All right, so let's look at the glass breaker head here. It's the top. If you can, there, uh, you saw it briefly. Uh, there we go. You can kind of see it right there. That's uh. Yeah. All right, I'm going to reassemble this. So we're back, and I've also retightened this screw just to, because there was something that I forgot to show you before, uh, so that you're, there, that's proof. Uh, and that is that this knife is indeed back flickable out of the box. There we go, and there should be a video right here if you want to see how that's done. There we go. Okay. So, um, the handle is glass-filled nylon and is extremely grippy out of the box. It softens up slightly. I felt like my uh, the corner of my pants pocket was going to just disintegrate with how much wear I was putting it under. Let's see. Um, other things, let's, let's try an edge test. There's, out of the box, there's a micro bevel on it that is, that's a concept that I may do a video on it. Let's try a draw cut on lumber paper. Nice clean edge there. And push cut. It'll dig in, but it won't push cut quite like the uh, Sunman Moo. Well, the Sunman Moo is just push through. Oh, by the way, uh, this is a brand new Sunman Moo. I, uh, I had given away my old one. Yeah. Again, it doesn't take that much of a draw, but it does take a draw in order to cut some book paper, so we have that. Okay, now for various stats about blade steel and hardness, you can see the full list of stats right there. The blade is 440C, or at least it's labeled 440C, and it's 58HRC, and I'm inclined to believe that. Um, Let's see, some other interesting notes. Uh, one is that, depending on whether my lighting will cooperate with me, you'll be able to see, maybe, hopefully, that the there's no skeletonization in the liners. They're, they're solid all the way through. The lines are very clean together, and the only gripe that I could find when I was scrutinizing over this is that there's a teeny, like, hair's breadth of a gap right there, but there's, unless you're like the fustiest person in the world, there's no way you're even going to notice that. You'd have to be looking for problems with this knife. Um, unlike the, uh, the 7063 Sunremu over here, the spacer is the same glass-filled nylon that is this, although it's not, um, it's not textured the way that this was over here. It's just nice and smooth there, kind of, kind of satiny. I have been carrying this around for a couple of days. Uh, the only complaint that I have is that in my area it's very, it's a little over long for, for concealed carry, so I might have to do something about that at some point, but more than likely I'll just give this to a, uh, I'm not gonna, more than likely I'll just give this to somebody that uh, lives out of, out of my area. I'm, I'm very fond of this so far. It's incredibly sturdy. Ah, the, there's a nice little comfort cut right here. And the, the way that the handle is shaped is uh, very, very nice. It has the teensiest bit of a palm swell. Yeah. 
if you want a knife that will function out of the box, it will depend on what you want it to do. If you want one that cannot possibly be charged for uh, the, the usual access lock kind of uh, flick open, flick closed thing, this will be pretty sturdy. It's not going to, not going to go anywhere. And a minor modification, just loosening that little screw right there, will make it pop open, just like that one. Uh, glass breaker, you might, if you wanted to wear it lefty, you are going to have to put a little bit of work into it, but uh, I always like the slightly customizable knives. Like, I'm, if there was a little bit more meat right here, I would put one of those little Emerson hooks in there, wear that around for a little while. Um, even though normally I wear my knives like up here in the pocket rather than down here at this corner. Yeah, don't have a whole lot of room in my camera frame to, uh, to really tell you all, all about that. I might make a, a video entirely uh, dedicated to that as a concept. All right, so I am very much in love with this knife. I uh, hope to be getting some more Ganzo in the, or Ganzo, uh, yeah, in the future, because this is a very well put together knife. Quick little insert here to show you that I did go through with that modification that I talked about. The spring right here is now loosened. There is an album with photos talking about that down below, and a feature of this knife that I forgot to mention is the little down ramp right here. The up ramp is fine. It encourages you to hold it in the correct position. The down ramp is very nice if you're going to choke up on it for to doing some fine work and just just the right shape so that it is comfortable to hold the knife up here in much the same way as many of those knives that have the super choil that um, where you normally place your finger up here on the blade uh, one oh i also found a something of a happy medium for the pin tightness, this is about um, as perfect as I'm going to get it, and a, an unintended side effect of the loosening of the spring here is, yeah, you can flip, flip it open without touching either feature there. Normally you can only do that in reverse. Back to our regularly scheduled program. I'm very, I'm very satisfied with that. All right, if you found this video to be useful to you or helpful or fun, uh, give me a like to raise my ranking in search results. Um, so far, as I've seen, the reviews on this are pretty like rare. There aren't a whole lot of uh, reviews out for this knife, so maybe we can make me the top one. That would be great. Uh, give me a subscription if you wanted to see more videos like this in the future. If you wanted to get a hold of me, I have a Twitter now. Um, in addition to my usual contact, this uh, the, the name of the channel is the same as the name of my Gmail. Uh, or you can leave a comment. I do read all of the comments, and as soon as they break the Google Plus uh, integration, finally, I will be able to actually respond to those, which I've very much been wanting to do for a while. Uh, if you're watching this on another service, all of my details are in the description. I also do other videos, like um, videos about knot tying, video... Uh, I don't remember if I used this space on screen at all. Videos about knot tying, I do uh, videos about knife maintenance, uh, things like different sorts of sharpeners, that kind of thing. Um, thank you very much for watching.